In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to remove a five o'clock shadow or stubble using Photoshop. Now this technique is going to come in handy for those times where maybe you photograph someone and they have shaved, but there might be patches or areas of stubble uh, say on the uh, chin area or they might have missed some on the neck area or they were supposed to be clean shaven for the shoot or and they just forgot to shave or somehow the stubble is a bit distracting so to, in order to do this technique the first thing that I do is I'm going to tackle the stubble and then I'm going to tackle the actual five o'clock shadow that you see where it's not actually stubble that's come through, but there are just darker areas on the skin. So we'll tackle those and all those areas. And then once that's done, I'm just going to replace the uh, areas of skin that are now not quite matching the rest of the skin tone and so just bring back some of the color into the skin so you get something end up with something that looks like the person has gone from uh, stubbly to clean shaven so let's have a look at how that's done Okay, so on the screen now I've got my before image with the stubble and so as I was saying there might be a case where the person has shaved but there might be just little stray areas that you just want to tidy up. So maybe you want to keep the, the most of the stubble but just clean it up so that you get rid of those stray hairs. This technique will work for that or it might be that you just want to address the uh, five o'clock shadow that, that where the person is shaved but there is still those darker areas so there is a lot of uses for this techniques so that you can apply to your own portraits all right so first thing I've got my uh, image on the screen and the first thing I'm going to do is create a new empty layer so that's that little icon there it looks like a piece of paper with a fold in it so I'll click on that I now have a new empty layer and you can just to keep yourself organized you can name each layer so I'm going to call this stubble all right and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the clone stamp and I'm going to change my blend mode the default is normal and so if you just click on this little drop down menu I'm going to come all the way down to lighten my opacity is 100% and flow is 5% and I'm going to make sure that sample all layers is selected. The brush tool, I'm going to have a nice soft brush and the size of the brush is going to be something that uh, is basically around the size that I can get rid of a little bit of stubble at this at at once so you don't want too big a brush because that's going to make your uh, adjustments uh, like you you want to do this in small steps rather than trying to do a large area at once it's going to look a, a lot neater so I'm going to come across to the camera right side of the face and what I'm going to do is select a clean patch of skin right here and it's basically I'm grafting this clean skin over this area by choosing the lighten blend mode what I'm saying to Photoshop is I only want you to add these pixels to the darker area and I want you to ignore the lighter areas and so this will give you a much more seamless result so I'm hovering my mouse over the clean area of skin. I'm holding down the option on a Mac or Alt on a Windows and clicking on that area. And now I have selected an area of clean skin that I'm going to clone over the top of the stubble. And so you can see that just by choosing that lighten blend mode, 
Photoshop is only adding pixels to the darker areas. And so you can see that now we've removed that, those little hairs there or little bits of stubble. And because we've got a nice soft brush, it's uh, harder to, to trace where we've cloned. All right, so I'll do a couple more. All right, so these ones here and same process. I'm constantly sampling clean areas of skin that I want to place over the areas that have the stubble and just working my way through there and just cleaning up that stubble. All right, so I'll go ahead and finish this off so you don't have to sit here and watch me do the entire area and then I'll come. All right, so there is the stubble removed there. And so what I'm going to do now is just reduce the opacity on that layer so it doesn't look as obvious. So what I do is I go all the way across to 0% and then I just gradually bring my slider up until I get to the point where it looks natural so that I haven't moved too many pixels around. So usually around 85, I think looks good. All right, still looks kind of natural. So next stage is I wanna tackle the tone, this uh, five o'clock shadow, this blue black tone. So the way I'm going to do that is again, create a new empty layer. And this time I'm going to use the brush tool. So click on that. I'm gonna make sure that my brush is set to zero hardness. And this time, so by default, the blend mode for the brush tool will be set to normal. All right, and I'm going to have the opacity at 100% and I'll bring my flow up to 10% and I'm going to change the blend mode here in the layers palette to color. And then I can come in, make sure I've got a, a nice big brush. And so what I'm doing now is I'm telling Photoshop that where there is dark tone, I'm going to replace it with a skin tone. So in order to do that, I need to tell Photoshop what color I want to replace these darker tones with. And so in order to do that, I'm going to find an area of skin next to these uh, uh, five o'clock shadow areas. So I'm going to pick this skin tone here. So I'm holding down the option key on a Mac Alt on a Windows and holding down and click. And now you can see in the foreground window, let me just set that back to the default. So just watch these little color swatches when I do that. So holding down the option on a Mac, Alt on a Windows, select a skin tone area close to the area of five o'clock shadow that you want to adjust. Hold that down and click. And now you can see in the foreground window, that's the color I'm going to be working with. So that's the color I'm telling Photoshop to now replace those five o'clock shadow areas. And so by choosing the color blend mode, what I, what's going to happen is rather than just putting pixels over the top of these areas, Photoshop is going to blend those colors in to match the darker and lighter tone. So it gives you a much more accurate uh, color th rather than just putting a color over the top. So I'll show you the difference. If I was to just have a normal blend mode and I've got my color selected and I just go over the top of these areas, can you see how there are just pixels going over the top and you get this whole blurred effect and it doesn't really work. So let's have a look at exactly what's happening when I change my blend mode from normal to color. So if I have these two textures that I've got on the screen now, if I create a new empty layer and let's say I'm going to put a blue 
color over the top of these textures here. All right, so if I just have my blend mode to normal and I brush on the blue color here onto that texture, you can see that the color is building up, but the more I put on, it's actually the pixels are sitting on top of that texture and they're not, now they're, they're uh, hiding the texture. You can see here the same with this textured wall here. As I build up the color, you can no longer see the texture underneath. So when you just have the normal blend mode, it's going to place pixels on top of your image and eventually it will hide the texture. Have a look what happens when I change that blend mode to color. Can you see how now the texture is revealed and what Photoshop does, which is really cool, is where there are darker pixels, it's going to make that color that you place on top of your image darker and where it's lighter, it's going to make it look lighter and, and you'll continue to reveal the texture and it gives you a far more realistic approach. So that's exactly what's happening when we're adding the color to the five o'clock shadow. Now let me show you the difference when, I'll just create a new empty layer. Let me just rename that as well. Five o'clock shadow, I type with one finger. And I'm gonna change my blend mode to color. All right, so select my color, and now I'm going to go over those areas. Can you see the difference now? Rather than putting pixels over the top, it's changing the color of that five o'clock shadow to a more pleasing skin tone without actually just laying pixels over the top. So I'm gonna do this area under the chin. And I'm also going to do the top here, the stubble above the lip. And while I'm here, I may as well do this neck area. So I'm going to choose, again, resample, because it's a slightly different color. And I'll go over this neck area. So we're getting rid of that sort of gray skin tone, the five o'clock shadow look, and I'm replacing it with a skin tone. And because my flow is set quite low, I'm not, I'm building up this adjustment rather than doing it all in one big hit. And that way you can get a much more uh, realistic look to your edit. So just fill it in until it looks good. And, and then it's a good idea to zoom back and just check how it's all looking. And so that's managed to get rid of the five o'clock shadow pretty well, I think. Just look for any little bits that I might have missed. So we've got before and after. All right, so the final step now is I just want to add a bit more realistic skin tone, skin tone color to the areas that I've just retouched. So what I'm going to do is I've got my brush tool selected. I'm going to come in and look for a pinkish area of skin. So something like this, and I'm going to hold down the option on a Mac Alt on a Windows click on that so you can see that's my foreground color selected. I'm going to create a new empty layer and I'm going to come down to edit, fill and choose fill with foreground color. And what that is going to do is it's telling Photoshop that I want you to use this color that I've just selected and fill this empty layer with that color. All right, and you end up with that. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is that's not what I want. I actually want to 
uh, blend this color in just a fraction into the skin tone. To, so in order to do that, I'm going to now change my blend mode from normal to overlay. And what you can see happens is overlay is kind of similar to the color, but what it does is it kind of uh, puts that entire color over the top. So this is actually a good way to uh, uh, tone your images if you want to, but what I want to do is just add a little bit of that color to my image and so and I want to selectively add it so I'm going to do that with a layer mask so what I'm going to do is click on this icon here and that's going to create a layer mask and now I want to hide this adjustment that I've just made this empty layer I want to put it underneath so that I can selectively bring it back and in order to do that it's command I and again if layer masks are something that you haven't got a lot of experience with there are many detailed tutorials on how to work with layer mask and exactly what's happening when we use a layer mask in the goal community so all right so I've got my black layer mask now and all I need to do is use a brush with white as my foreground color to reveal the adjustment that I just made so again I've got my brush tool selected my hardness is set to zero blend mode normal opacity 100 and I'm going to bring my flow down to about 5% and what I'm going to do is just brush some color back into those areas. And it's just like a hint of this skin, skin tone color here. Just adding it in to some of the areas where I got rid of that five o'clock shadow just to bring a bit more life back into the skin. All right, so let's have a look. We've got before and after. And if you think that that is a little bit of overkill, you can control how much of that comes into effect by just knocking back the opacity. So we can just bring it back. Because it's just a titch of color that we want to add. So let's have a look at that. Got before and after and that's looking a bit more realistic zoom out just to make sure that it looks okay and just check so there we go we got before and after we've managed to get rid of the five o'clock shadow and some of the stubble 